Christians today tend to read the New Testament as if every little verse was written to them, personally. And I'm talking about America, that's my district. I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's similar elsewhere, but here, yeah, it's personal, very personal. And I like that. You know, applying a verse to themselves and not the church at large, it just reinforces the individual. <laughs> as if Americans need any help with that, right? The center is the self, self-centered. And eventually they come to the conclusion that they are enough. I love my job. <laughs> they conclude that they don't need to be a part of something, anything, and, and most definitely not church. I mean, why? Like, why? Why even? <laughs> oh, I think I'll be up for promotion next quarter. Initially, the early Christians, who were mostly former Jews, were treated as a Jewish sect. It wasn't long before people began to understand that the church was an entirely different thing. Books in the Bible written to individuals. Luke, Acts, 1st and 2nd Timothy, Titus, Philemon, and 3rd John. Oh, and maybe Second John. It was written to the lady. Intriguing. But most of the New Testament was written directly or indirectly to churches. It's fairly clear when you read those books, if you read those books. Do people read those books? Don't read those books. I mean, why? <laughs> Even Jesus' seven letters in Revelation were written to symbolic or figurehead angels of the churches. So 19, out of the 27 New Testament books are to churches, yet you read them like they were delivered to your very own doorstep, on your coffee mug, social media bio, tattoo, whatever. And it's your scripture. And I think you're onto something. You. Honestly, there's only two mentions of the words, the church, prior to the situation with Ananias and Sapphira and Acts. And Both of the two mentions were made by the bearded wonder, Jesus. He's got a lot of nicknames where I come from. The first reference of the church is in the book of Matthew. This is the well-known incident, at least to myself and my colleagues, at Caesarea Philippi, when Peter blurted out that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus responds saying his church would be built and the gates of Hades would not prevail against it. Duly noted. The second, also in Matthew, hey, I know my Bible. When Jesus instructed his disciples how to deal with the sinful behavior in the church, oh dear, sinful behavior. <laughs> Tell me more. Okay, another time. Church, what is that exactly? Why? Will it be able to withstand the gates of Hades? Why didn't he just say synagogue? I mean, he's Jewish. Is a church a synagogue? Or is a church just a version of a synagogue? Can, can, can we blame the translators, King James, somebody, anybody? Those people with the sinful behavior. So many begging questions about church. Okay, let's, let's go to the third day after Jesus was crucified. The beginning of that day started out fire. Satan and demons. We got the W. We've been celebrating like nobody has celebrated before. Beat God at his own game. He sent his son to earth and we got humans, you know, his prize creation. We got humans to kill him. Crazy. They killed the son of God. Mad crazy. Standing in our way, causing death and destruction. Nothing. <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> then you know it's coming, right? You know the story. We're all like, what's that sound? Quiet like a whisper, but at the same time, a lion's roar. <laughs> I'll just cut to the end, okay? Resurrection. The Son of God rises from the dead. There. You happy? Death is defeated. Satan and demons defeated. For 40 days, Jesus teaches his followers, and then he ascends to heaven to be at the right hand of God. Blah, 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 blah. That's how it's written in scripture. I mean, except for the blah, 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 blah part. It can't get any worse for us. It can't. And then it does. God begins to unveil something, and I... Mm, 
hate to give him credit. But it was masterful. A secret weapon. His secret weapon. We didn't see it coming. Not like this. The church. The church, powered by the Holy Spirit. And I don't think that's fair. I, I, I just don't. That first day, 3,000 new believers are added to the church. Then, then thousands more. Crowd hysteria, obviously. We know how that works. It's one of our favorites. It's a silly movement. Jesus followers. It'll, it'll flame out. Except it doesn't. Because it isn't, it isn't crowd hysteria. Humans are actually taking this stuff seriously. To heart, as they say. They're changing their priorities. They meet regularly. They learn from apostles. They pray. They take care of one another. Their beliefs are underpinned by, by signs and wonders, miracles. And I, I don't think that's very fair either. And then the worst, they, they become this unified, cohesive group who share everything in common. Even money. It's on. You, th you think we're just gonna pull out the popcorn and watch it happen? Oh, no, 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 no. Satan's forces go full out against God's church. First persecution, killing the apostles and key members. Doesn't work. Christianity spreads like wildfire. Israel, Samaria, and the entire Roman Empire, beyond. We, we lure key members into sinful behaviors. They think they're so immune. This will cause dissension among the leaders, disillusion in the people, perfect. Doesn't work. The church leaders teach spiritual disciplines and natural consequences, you know, the things that help humans get their base desires in a line, like whatever. We're just getting started though. Send in false teachers, cause confusion and ill feelings. Church leaders bring in the apostles. The New Testament writings begin. Now everybody can hear the same teaching, correct teaching, not our counterfeit stuff. Oh, I mean, we mix in a lot of truth, so most of you are none the wiser, but it's the 100% truth that we steer clear of. It's very dangerous. The gates of Hades cannot prevail against the church that Peter went on and on about. We begin to get a glimpse of it. Before the Christians, I might add. But then the Apostle Paul writes the book of Ephesians, and the, and the cat is out of the bag. We finally get it. It's like our evil eyes are finally opened. Jesus considers the church to be his, his bride. He loves the church, and he gave his life for the church, the, the bride, the group of people who follow God. It's ridiculous on so many levels. And, and when the Apostle John writes the book of Revelation, now it comes into even more vivid focus. This, this battle between the church and Satan's forces will last until we are, till we're taken care of. I, I don't wanna go into detail, okay? We will not be able to defeat the church, but let's not dwell on the negative, okay? We have the ability to cause havoc and harm to it and therefore harm God. And something in my little demon heart just smiles at that. I mean, could we ever win? Yeah. But what's winning? God is all-powerful, so yeah. Cards are stacked, but we can make them hurt. Mm -hmm. We just go after you. And we go after you by confusing what the church even means. Yay us. We study our playbooks, and we settle in for a long, long battle. A little disadvantaged, I admit, because we cannot comprehend why God loves humans so much. Why is God willing to go to any and all lengths to have them be his children? It's bananas. But that is offset by the fact that we also have our opponent's playbook, the Bible. Yeah, don't read it. Old, outdated, boring, yawn, yawn, yawn. <clears throat> but in it, we get a glimpse of why the church is so important. See, the church is the way most people will come to have a knowledge and potentially a relationship with Jesus. Learn to follow him, become disciples, make more disciples, help people, love people, love God. See, it's not good. And I probably shouldn't have divulged this info since you guys never see it that way anyway. But just to be clear, 
When I'm referring to the church, I don't mean a building. I wish I did, because church buildings, they get mixed reactions. And that's how we like it. Maybe it's a cathedral. I don't know, maybe it's a, a white wooden shack with a steeple or a converted storefront, but somebody's bound to have issue with it, and that's great. But it's not the buildings. See, in the early days, the followers met in homes or public places, and we learned that early on, the church's people, not a bunch of buildings, but we'll convolute it so it's just kind of one and the same, and people will just stay away altogether. But back to the early days, we saw cracks, not in the buildings, right? You keep up, cracks in the unity of the people in the early churches. And we caused some as well, not in the buildings, in the people, in the relationships, keep up. Humans, Ananias and Sapphira, mm, top five story. They want special recognition. Perfect. They lie to Peter and the Holy Spirit to get it. Oh, but the response is swift and severe. They drop dead, two points. But it causes respect and awe among the believers. I didn't really see that coming. Sexual scandals, fraud, greed, legal disputes, theft, even anger between church members. All of these and more beset the early church. So you think I'd be happy, but the apostles and the teachers lead the church in overcoming these issues. And they were big issues. And in fact, in one severe case of blasphemy, the apostle Paul even turned over the offenders to Satan. That's hardcore. Paul always gave me the creeps. But over the centuries, we watched the church make mistakes. Not the building, the people, they make mistakes. They recover, make more mistakes, and recover again. God and his infinite patience with the church. So 20 centuries after the beginning of the church, and if you are thinking buildings right now, so help me. 20 centuries after the beginning of the church, it still exists. Still a powerful influence in the world, still causing us headaches. But demons are making headway once again. Media and polls to emphasize that the church in North America is declining in size and influence. Is it really? I mean, you know what they say about statistics and lies. The projections show that more and more Christians find church too boring or too irrelevant to their personal lives. Took the words right out of my mouth. They just don't see the reason to be a part of a church. And I couldn't agree more. It's a slow process, but it's working well in North America. Thanks, North Americans. In America, we've become very adept at using contentious political and social issues to keep people riled up at the teachings of many churches. In other churches, they're just leaving scriptures out and filling it with politics instead. Oh, it was easy. <laughs> Well-meaning politicians, and educators, successful businessmen, Hollywood, sports celebrities, they've all helped us as we've been able to confuse people about, oh, so many things. We've become so successful that in some places, demon worship is just accepted as another way for people to express themselves. Promotion! We are intent on smashing the church to pieces, taking it apart and smashing the pieces to pieces. Because see, if the people who make up the church destruct, the buildings will just rot on their own. So why even go? Like, to a church, or be the church. Like, why? Why? When you can stay at home, by yourself, and read all those scriptures written especially to you, on your mug. Because it's all about you, right?